So here's one example of how I find a mine site. So I was at the Connecticut Historical Society and I was looking for information on the Simsbury mine, which is the oldest chartered copper mine in America. And the Simsbury mine was turned into a prison during the Revolutionary War called Newgate Prison. But there are other outlying mines that were mentioned in some early 1700s documents that were simply forgotten about. So I started searching for more information about these outlying mines, and I came across a map from the early 1800s that showed not only Newgate Prison, the, the site of the original copper mine, but also the site of all of the outlying mines. Now that I had a map showing these mines, I had something to go on, but there's still a big step from taking a map from the 1800s and relating it to a modern USGS map or aerial photos. So I wanted to find the location of these mines, and specifically a mine called the North Hill Mine, which was related to the original Simsbury Mine. So what I did was I took the early 1800s map and found a landmark on the map that I could relate to a modern map, and it was the corner of Newgate Prison. So I measured from the corner of Newgate Prison to the mine site, and the map was in rods, so I simply converted rods to feet. The map also indicated magnetic north, so I took a bearing from the corner of the prison directly to the mine site. But this bearing and distance would still not locate the mine site on a USGS map, and the reason is because of something called declination. And declination is the difference between magnetic north and true north and declination changes over time. So what I needed to do was find out what the difference was between true north and magnetic north in 1830 in Connecticut. I found out that the declination was 6 degrees and 25 minutes. Today's declination is about 13 degrees. So you could see this difference between 6 and 13 degrees would have thrown me way off from the mine site so far that I would probably not never find a small mine site like this. So what I did was I took the USGS topo map, the quadrangle that showed Newgate Prison, and I took 6 degrees and 25 minutes, roughly, off of True North. And I took a bearing from the corner of the prison and I measured out the feet that I converted the rods from. And I was able to find precisely the site of the mine on the hills, on a hillside, on the map, and I marked that, that location. Then what I did was I took a UTM ruler and I found the UTM coordinates of that site. I plugged that into the GPS and then I headed out into the woods. So I hiked out with the GPS and I found the site. And it was an easy site to find because the tailings pile was still evident. You could see the waste rock heaped up and there was no vegetation growing on the waste rock because of the copper ore. So I found the site, but the tunnels that were indicated on the 1830 map, the tunnels were indicated with a Y symbol, which means an underground entrance. Those were completely obliterated. There was no sign of the tunnels. But that's not the end of this story. There's more to it. And you can find these underground sites by using clues in the landscape. And what you're looking for is a depression in the ground that was once an entrance into the hillside, but has seen erosion over the years and has slowly covered itself up. So I located the vague outline of a, of a trench, and I knew that was probably one of the original tunnels. So I dug around and I found top rock, which is the rock, the bedrock, that is above the tunnel entrance. When you find the top rock, you know that all you have to do is dig down and the tunnel will reveal itself. This was an easy one. With a few minutes of digging, I was able to find the opening. I dug it open big enough to enter, and when I entered, I found the tunnel was water-filled and very small proportions. This tunnel was probably four feet tall. I proceeded into the tunnel, uh, not knowing what I was gonna find, if this would lead to a stope, if there would be artifacts. Um, it's a really interesting point in the exploration when you first enter the tunnel. But in this case, unfortunately, there were no artifacts and the tunnel ended after about 75 feet. So that was the end of that exploration.